Just had it going. Got my man T Rome up in here. You know what I'm saying? You back there, T? I'm I'm here. I'm here. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell here. you who else is here real quick, ladies and gentlemen. All right, y'all. Let's do it. My man King Capri up in the house. What's up, E? What's going on, man? Everything good? Oh, man. I'm glad. Ah, man. Thank you. How you doing? Come on, man. Come on, man. Ready for you to come down here and do what you do. Ah, oh, man. I'm going to turn it up, man. That's what's up. Tempo for the lock in the name. That's what's going on. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. I was just telling kid, man, the last time we actually got together rock, man, was like uh, at the atrium. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was, that was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was hot in the beginning. Man, was, man, was, uh, Charlotte is just crazy anyway. Charlotte's like one of the cities that uh, if you have something real major going on out here, they're going to come out and show you a lot of love. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. Charlotte's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to let people know that if they've never experienced, you know what I mean, my man Kid Capri. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never experienced a kid complete set. I'm telling you, you know the man can do it. Cause I remember, I'm gonna tell you something funny about that party, man. That was so funny. Mm -hmm. Cause you were rocking. Yeah, yeah. And then a lot of people were like, you know, yo, you know what I'm saying? Go down south. Go down south. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Kids stopped her and arrow. All right, listen. Y'all wanna go? You you wanna go down south? Yeah. <laughs> yo, and he and killed it. Just been. You killed it though. Uh -huh. Bang them all around the world down <laughs> south, <laughs> down <laughs> south bangers, and that's what's gonna go on tonight. It's gonna be a crazy party tonight, man. I'm, oh, coming, yeah. I'm coming in and going real heavy on everybody tonight, so that's it, man. Get take, ready. Take them all over, kid. Take them all over, up top, yeah. down south, yeah, west coast. You yeah. know what I mean? It's gonna be crazy. No doubt, no doubt. So I, I guess, man, let's go in and uh, you know start talking, man, about you know I guess uh, you know the beginning, man, the beginning for the, for the people who don't know the story. You know what I mean? I mean, it's an old story. I've been around for a long time. <laughs> But, um, you know, I first started, you know, watching the uh, guy named DJ B. Ward from Rockwell Incorporated. This was many years ago. I, I started from when I started getting known. I started getting known when um, I started playing in an in in after-hours spot with a guy named DJ uh, Chief Rocker Star Child. Okay. And, you know, he was legend already for playing with Hollywood and Brucey B. and making the mixtapes then. Me and Star Child started making mixtapes together. We put them out for a year. We did our thing with them. And then uh, Red Alert got me a job in Studio 54. Okay. I okay. played in Studio 54 that summer. And that summer, just it just became the pandemonium because they started seeing how my shows was and how crazy they was. And um, I started going, you know, to Virginia and a little couple of places. My, and, and I stopped the 54 thing. And you know, I was wondering what I was gonna do next. I started making my own mixtapes, sitting on the street corner and selling them. And it got it turned into a phenomenon. Right. And that's how that was the beginning of a, of a real career for me. And next thing you know, Def Comedy Jam came. My first right. album, my first album came. My first radio deal came. Right. And then my shows was just become legendary and just become better and better and better until I was known for rocking the party to being the greatest one to rock a party. And you know, it's a it's a privilege because you know I know in this business you could be here today, going tomorrow. Exactly. And I've been going for the last 18 years, known for the last 18 years, and it's been a blessing, man. Yeah, it's, it's good. Beautiful man, it's beautiful because I mean, you know, I, I got a couple of Kid Capri mixed tapes. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, from, sir. From back in the day, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Them definitely things definitely uh, did good. They still sell now, still do good now. I mean, I don't sell them, but you know, that's what got me known for people copying them and right. getting them to everybody. And you know, it, it definitely did good and, and it developed me as a, as a person that uh, I, I didn't have to go and ask nobody for anything. I went and grind on my own. I didn't right. have to worry about a company giving me a deal or right. worrying about if somebody's going to do me a favor. I sat on that street corner, didn't care if I was getting ticket, the chances of getting shot at or robbed or right, right, you know right, any of that. Right, right. And I just did what I had to do. I mean, at times there was chicks driving by in cars laughing like I was doing bad sitting on that corner selling them tickets. But I knew what the groundwork was. Right. I was ready to do the work, and it paid off for me. So you know, I'm here today. You know. I mean, paid off big. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean, right. major. You know what I mean? So I mean, that that was the beginnings, man. Now let's talk about certain certain situations, man. Like you. You know you gotta break down the deaf comedy jam. Because I'm gonna tell you that that was a phenomenon. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I yes, mean sir. every since that has been done, nobody has even come close. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. To even trying to touch it. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, I mean sir. Russell put that together, man, and, and you and Martin, man, I mean, I, so how did that come about for you, kid? What happened was I was doing a show, um I was doing a show with LL Cool J and um I did the after party. 
we had, we had we had the show at the garden. Right. And then I left to do the after party in the club named Demo Robbers. Russell Simmons came into the party and seen the pandemonium. I had these people going crazy in this club. And he walked up and he said, you know, I'm doing this comedy show with HBO. And what you think about being a part of it? And at first I thought, you know, what, what would I have to do with a comedy show? <laughs> right, right, but then right. I thought, I said, this is Russell Simmons. It's HBO. And who am I to question this? So let's just go make it ride out and happen. And we ended up doing it. It became the number one show on HBO. And we still here 16 years later. You know what I'm saying? We just did the last shows with DL Hewley. Oh, really? The last, uh, the last season that just came out, which was uh, a few months ago. Right. And we're about to do the new season coming up. I think DL uh, DL's uh, hosting it again. All the music on it. For years, you've been hearing Def, uh, Def Jam music. Right. LL, Foxy, different right. people. Uh, the last two tapers that we've done, we, we've been doing, it's been all my music that we've been, I've been playing now. So it's, it's all my production, and uh, that's what's been going on. So I'm, I'm stepping up in my ranks is the behind the scenes as well as the. <laughs> front of the scene trying to make it hot you know that's good but that's good but yeah, i gotta say this little kid man you and martin man that chemistry was so crazy you know yeah, what i mean and i mean great. you know I, after martin left man you know I, I don't know if anybody else felt like this man but i was just like yo man <laughs> I, I, like, I tell you man you know martin martin brought something special to it First of all, it was new, it was brand new, right. it was something that was different. Right. It had Martin, had me, it had Russell, and then it had the media, so it had all the elements there. It had an urban feel to it, right. you know, and then what really made the show, really, was the audience. The audience was the ones oh, that made, God. that New York audience was the ones that made it crazy. I mean, it was all right when we moved to California. I, I mean, personally, in my personal opinion, I don't think we should have moved to California. Right. I know it was cheaper for the cameras, and it was better, the comedians was out there and all that. But that New York vibe, that New York crowd is what made it crazy when you seen it on television it just looked you just wanted to be there right. you know what i'm saying and, and and not to say that the rest of the years behind that wasn't good it was right. great the ratings was crazy oh, even yeah. to this day the ratings are crazy but when me martin and bernie and chris <laughs> Ducker and mm -hmm. all of the, the fresh the brand new people yeah. and dell Gibbons, when that happened it was a phenomenon I mean, ridiculous because you know what kid a lot of people really don't understand that that show birthed all those careers. It birthed yeah. Bernie yeah. Mac, Chris yeah. Tucker, D.L. Hewley, right. Steve Harvey, Jamie Foxx, Bill Bellamy, Bill Bellamy mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence, um, Cat Williams. Cat Williams. Uh, we could go on and on and on yeah. and on. Uh, Monique, Adele Gibbons, Ted, uh, Carpenter. Ted Carpenter. All these different people came from Def Comedy Jam. That's why when it was time for us to go back and do the new tapings and some of the comedians that became big off the show acted like they couldn't come back right. I was bad with that and right. I really right. wanted to go public with that but I'm not a dude like that so I stayed out of it but right. there were certain key dudes that they was nowhere before Def Comedy right. Jam exactly. you know what I'm saying and they never showed up to a show wow. and as a matter of fact you know what I'm never going to go into I was about to go into it <laughs> but I'm going to keep my mouth shut <laughs> I'm going to shut up I'm going to keep it uncontroversial <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, there's certain co comedians that didn't come back, and then they came back later on. You know, at first they, you know, they didn't, they didn't you know, they got what they got, and that's it. You know, but Def Comedy Jam is what birthed them. Def Comedy Jam is what brought them there. Russell Simmons put it together for them. You know what I'm saying? And, and he didn't have to come and get me. He could have came and got Red Alert. He could have right. came and got Chuck Chill Out. He could have right. came and got all these dudes. But I built up that credibility in the street enough to hold my own and carry the weight of what was going on. And, right. it, and it worked out great for us. It's a monumental show. It's always going to be around. Oh, yeah. It's been here for 16 years. I've been on tour with them for eight years with it. You know, so we done did our thing with it, for real. That's hot, man, because I've heard stories that when the cameras went off, people didn't want to go home. You were still now, killing them. Oh yeah, that's when the, that's that's when the party was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The real, the, the party was then. I mean, I actually had people come to me in the street or in airports and stuff and say, yo kid, I didn't really care about the comedians. I just wanted to see a little <laughs> minute that you was on at the end of the show. That was so much to me. Yo. And that meant a lot to me because I know what I do in a real show and I know what I see on television. When I see on television, I'm looking at it like, this ain't me. That's not what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? They ain't, the world ain't get a chance to see on television what I really, really do. Right. And as a matter of fact, Fact, what people have seen at my shows and parties and concerts, whatever, they, you know, that's all they know. There's so much more to Kid Capri that they don't know about that they're about to learn about right now. Uh, oh, they're going to learn tonight. <laughs> that's you know, right. The club yeah. Tempo. It's you know going to be mean? crazy that's Tempo, it. Charlotte. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, what, what's that address? Uh, with, I, we had it over there. Over there. Over there. Give me the address. 4809 Wilkerson Boulevard, right down the street, man. Going to sexy, too. It's going to be crazy. It's 25 and up. 
Yes, sir. So, kid, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I know it, it, the talk in the street is crazy. I mean, yeah, people man. are definitely ready to get rocked. If they ready to party, they can't come in the right place. They're coming to see me, man. It's going to be right up in there. I'm coming in there with the, with the amp this too. I, I, I'm, I'm going straight to the stage. My man Technician, the DJ, he going to start y'all off okay. and get y'all situated from the beginning. Okay. And I'm going to come right in after that and we're going to burn it down real quick. That's it. I That's mean, it. I heard it, man. So I, I say right now, kid, because I know people want to talk to you, man. So 570-Q927, hit us right now. Holler my man, kid. You know all what I'm day, saying? All day, man. 570-Q927, hit us up. Let's talk about it. Let's Rock, it's going down. We're coming right back with Kid Capri. More music, keep it locked. Succession, okay. Yeah. Cute.